trying to. Extreme rules tonight, everybody. Woo. Sean's very excited. Yeah. You know what? Uh, the word yes. extreme is uh, bandied around a little too easily. I mean, they use it to describe like potato chips and stuff like that. Uh, this show, uh, below that. The show wasn't extreme? No. The show was very mundane. Yeah. Well, it was, uh, it was not a bad show. I think the problem was the main event was the... <laughs> I fucked it up again. We're doing the show for the second time, everybody, because my computer was all wacky. Sure, blame it on the computer. And uh, I, I had a saying that I wanted to use to describe the main event, and I fucked it up the first time, and now I can't remember the unfucked up version. It was the fuckediest fucked finish in the history of fucks. Is that it better? It sucked. I've never seen a fuck finish like this before. Yeah, I went on a rant the first time we tried to record. and uh, the They may just, as well try again. The yeah. Just okay. He's only got energy for one rant a day. <laughs> yeah, that was done. it. It's gone. Sorry. It's lost the lost time. This show's going to be awesome. Try it again. Oh, I've never done an awesome show. <laughs> um, so, I have seen, of course, many, many fucked finishes in my day. And I've seen many announcers arguing over fucked finishes. But usually it is announcer A saying, that was a fuck finish. And announcer B says, no, that finish was legit. And this time there was a fuck finish. And the announcers were arguing with themselves. Was that a fuck finish? I don't know if that finish was fucked. It was kind of fucked. I'm not sure. So yeah, uh, the show ended with mass confusion, which is never a good thing. That's right. We had extreme rules and there were several stipulations on the show. It wasn't uh, stipulations all up and down the show. There was a women's match, which I guess is a stipulation in and of itself. But we had a cage match, last man standing, Russian chain, Chicago street fight, and kiss me arse. That's one, two, three, four, five stipulations. Of these five stipulations, only three were upheld. Yes. That's, yeah. a, that's an F, I think. That would be a D minus. But a yeah. D minus. That's a D minus in terms of upholding stipulations here on this show. So I guess we should get into it. You guys didn't see the opener. Well, before we do that, can we talk about uh, Daniel Bryan? Uh, that's what I was going to start with, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Talking about, like, fucking fans over. Like, <laughs> they've known for a long time that he was going to be wrestling. And they sit there and promote the show with him on it. And the last possible minute, uh, they pull him off the show. They and pulled him off at 2.45 Pacific. Yeah. Literally which is two hours and 15 minutes before the show starts. 5.45 Eastern. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? They have a lot of guys that show up and they're just milling around backstage. got nothing to do. Like, I bet Zack Ryder was there, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there was no chance he was going to be on the show. Yeah. But he was there. You know who wasn't there today? Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Wasn't even flown in. Which means, for sure, they knew before 5.45 Eastern that he was not going to be on this show. And that for whatever reason, they thought it would be fine to just wait until 5.45. Tell the world he ain't going to be there. That is just the first the long line of fuck yous in the show today. Well, that was one of them. So he was gone, and so they said, make sure you tune into Extreme Rules for more on the Daniel Bryan situation. <laughs> I don't recall that tremendous. <laughs> any news. Uh, I believe they said he's not here. Oh, that We knew that on the pre-show when they replaced his match. Oh, well, I'm doing my hey, best. Hey, I'll tell you the one good thing about Daniel Bryan not being on the show. Because he was not on the show, they moved Bad News Barrett versus Neville to the pre-show. That's true. And they moved the tag team match to the main card. Indeed. Which guaranteed that it got more time, and it was a way better match. It was. That is a positive. Neville beat Bad News Barrett. They actually went 10 minutes, but there was a commercial break on the network in between. So the network could sell the network. And then they came back, and Neville hit the red arrow and pinned the guy. Did Neville jump around a lot and spin around? Yes. All right. <laughs> You've seen the match. Yeah. <laughs> I picture it in my head. Yeah. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. All right, Vinny, let's let's get going with the main show. So get this. Dean Ambrose versus Luke Harper, Luke Harper in a street fight. They brawled a bit. They used chairs. They used sticks. Dean got suplexed onto a chair that was set up, and he almost got impaled on one of the legs. Well, they brawled to the back. They hit each other with, other with weapon shots. And then Luke got into a truck. Dean jumped in a window, and they drove away. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, 
to be fair, they did come back eventually, and and the match was not ruled. I mean, they pretty much said the match is continuing. Yeah, we don't know where they are, but it's continuing. I thought this would lead to fun skits of them, like in a grocery store. Or Too much creativity, Vinny. A mall or something, a park. No, no, there's Dolby and vanished to be continued. The backstage brawling was some of the worst backstage brawling I'd ever seen. And the the announcers were selling it like it was the greatest backstage brawling they'd ever seen. There was one point where Dean Ambrose was... Uh, so they were Joe Rogan talking about Demetrius Johnson's fight? Yes. Yes, along those lines. He was, an he was standing on a pallet, and he uh, jumped off with both feet under the, under the pavement, and Jerry Lawler screamed, Oh no, look out! And nothing happened. Yes. <laughs> it was awful. Not the best backstage brawl I've ever seen. Hunter met with Kane... Ordered him to go find Harper and Ambrose, which, by the way, what the hell happened to that storyline? <laughs> he just didn't. Well, he was busy. Why would... So you've got the Stooges, right? Mm -hmm. Why would you send Kane, who's a main event participant, to go find people who you don't know where they are? They drove into Chicago in a vehicle. That's the only lead you've got. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where they're at. And he wanted Kane to go find them. Well, Kane's taller. Maybe he can see farther. I see. It's the best I can do. So as they were having this very long, boring conversation, Seth showed up and it got longer and boringer. And uh, the crowd was chanting, boring. And Kane finally agreed to do what was best for business. And somewhere in here, there were also chants for CM Punk, because of course there were. It was weird. I was listening to the crowd as they were chanting uh, boring very loudly. Then they started chanting it very quietly. Yeah, they yeah. turned him down. Yeah, it was weird. You can actually see like, the guy <laughs> what way was it weird? moving the slider button down. <laughs> yes. I do that to Vinny sometimes. I haven't done that in years, actually, now that I think about it. Usually you're too focused on turning the Craig up. Uh, that's true. Craig's very quiet. I, I've, I've, I think I've fixed him. If we can hear Sean from 30 feet away from that mic, I think we're good. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler versus Sheamus in a Kiss Me Arse match. So, it was Eden Styles doing the first match. And here they brought out JoJo to do this ring announcing, and she very nearly broke down in laughter throughout. And you know what's funny she is... She disappeared after this and was never seen again. Did you ever work as a referee, Vinny? You were for a while in, in uh, Pinnacle, right? Or not Pinnacle. Uh, uh, I don't think I ever did refereeing in front of a crowd. What the hell was the name of Caden's group? Is that Pinnacle? That's Pinnacle. A two layup. Tulalip, that's right, Tulalip. Did, did he do Pinnacle too? I don't actually, I don't actually know. I think so. He was I there. can't remember. Regardless, I don't think I, I ever reffed in front of a crowd. Okay. Well, I did. And a lot of the times when, if you could only afford one ref, then that guy just worked the whole show. But if you could afford two refs, the refs would alternate. Because one ref would come out and ref a match. And when he was done, he'd go back and he'd start working on the next match with the rest of the guys. Right. And they'd have another ref come out and so on and so forth. Apparently, this preparation for ring announcing was so difficult that they had to alternate girls. So, yes, Eden did one. Is it Eden or is it Edith? Eden. <laughs> I'll answer that question by saying this. It's 2015. There are no Ediths in the world anymore. Actually, Vinny, there is a UFC ring girl named Edith who's extremely attractive. That's the one. That's probably why I was confused. But anyway, Eden comes out, and then JoJo comes out. And yes, JoJo had to say with a straight face, this is a kiss me arse match. And then, for those of you that might be confused and watching this show for the first time, she then explained that the winner would have to, or the loser would have to kick the winner's arse. <laughs> yes. It was not enough to just say it's a kiss me arse match. It explained that one person would kiss the other person's arse. Yeah. Which I might add, didn't happen. I no. kind of did. Eh, no. Didn't happen the way Dave wanted, where Seamus would kiss his own ass. But anyway, go on. <laughs> so they had a match. Uh, Seamus put him in a cloverleaf, which should have been his finish for years now. One of the announcers was making kissy noises here. It was very irritating. Seamus threw him around in a violent and unprotected manner. They traded near falls, then Dolph had a small package for the win. It was a... As a match, pretty typical pay-per-view opener. Maybe a little worse than, than that. I actually thought this was a good match. Was Vinny was busy eating, so I don't know how closely he was paying attention. I actually put my sandwich down throughout here to take notes. Really? Yes. Sean, what did you think of this match? Um, first off, Dolph Ziggler could be picked up and placed any time in his career. He looks exactly the same. 
Like uh, like when he first came out to today, he looks exactly the same. Oh, hey, you missed the period where he cut all his hair off. Oh, okay, um, he cut all his hair off, and he had a short brown haircut, <laughs> and he looks so unbelievably generic that he started growing it back the next day. I think he has incredible uh, charisma. Uh, incredible? Yes, I do. Wow, beyond yeah. credibility. Yeah. Well, I'm making fun of you, Sean. It's all okay. right. I like Dolph Ziggler. I met the guy. Cool guy. Very funny. You met him? I did. In this Phil- I got to hear. In Philadelphia. He came, they were promoting a, a Raw or a SmackDown or something like that. And he came in. Uh, everybody met him. He was super cool, super nice. Did he say a bunch of really stupid jokes that everyone laughed at because he was famous? Uh, but they were actually stupid jokes. He was wearing a very hot pink shirt. I do remember that. Huh. Uh, but yeah, he was a cool guy. Anyway, I enjoyed the match as well, uh, except for the finish. Yeah. Um, if, if you want to get into that, there was... Well, let's I do this. want to get into right. the finish, yes. Okay. So I'll, I will tell you what happened, and you men can discuss if you enjoyed it. So uh, Dolph wins. So according to the stipulation, Seamus must now kiss his arse. And they teased this forever, and Dolph teased pulling his trunks down, and all the women screamed. But of course, it's PG, so he can't do that. So he pulled his... Gave himself a wedgie instead. Exposed a cheek. And uh, Seamus... Teased and protested forever, and finally just hit a low blow, hit a bro kick, gave himself a wedgie, rubbed Dolph's face in his ass, and then left. So they just a giant middle finger to the stip. Well, listen, because of this because the people are paying for in depth analysis here on this program, I'm going to give it to you. So if you recall. When when Dolph Ziggler won, and by the way, something we haven't talked about in the show, up until the women's match, this crowd was on fire, and the women killed them dead, and they never recovered afterwards. But they were going nuts for this match, and when Sheamus lost, they went even more nuts, because I think every single person in the building, and why would you not, thought for sure that Dolph Ziggler was going to lose and be humiliated. So when Sheamus lost... And he was going to have to kiss Dolph's ass. They were going crazy. They were chanting pucker up. They were were totally into this, waiting to see what was going to happen. So Seamus builds it up, and he builds it up, and he builds it up. He's on his knees. He's nearly weeping. Three times he's about to kiss his ass, and then he changes his mind. And the whole time, Dolph repeatedly says what? You made this match. This was your idea. So I think that that was their way of saying, we didn't fuck you. Seamus fucked himself, and Seamus ruined the stipulation. This wasn't our stipulation. This was Seamus' idea, and then he didn't do it because he's an asshole. I think that that's what their mindset was, which was why Dolph had to repeatedly say, this was your idea. Get over here and do it. This was your idea. So anyway, he didn't do it. And he bro kicked the guy, and then he grabbed Ziggler's face, and he rubbed his face all over his own ass. That was disgusting. Yeah, he gave him like a modified stink face, and it was unfortunate. And then JBL suggested that after this, Dolph should take two weeks off and then quit. There was one part in this match when uh, JBL and Michael Cole were talking over each other, and they weren't just like waiting for the other one to talk. They were literally saying sentences over each other. Like one, like neither one of them wanted to this stop announcing team sucks. What they were saying, <laughs> and I couldn't understand what either one of them were saying. Yes. I, I know you're new since WrestleMania, but they're terrible. <laughs> they're horrible at the drops. It was absolutely horrible. Yeah. yeah, it was lame. And by the way, I should add that Seamus lost and lied, and they still played his music when he left. Yes, <laughs> not a bad gig. This encourages me to lose and lie. And just play California Love everywhere you go. Exactly. Yeah. Had a commercial for shows in the network, including a big show Floyd Mayweather special, airing that the night before the Mayweather Pacquiao fight, which is actually a great idea, but they should have been hyping it for weeks now. The question is, is the big show match going to be better? As mentioned, I went back and watched that. We were both, uh, we were there live for that. Yeah. And I, I've not gone back and watched that whole show, but I wa- went back and watched the big show on Floyd, and it's great. It may be better fun. than yes. it may be better than this fight. Then it's possible. New Day versus Kid and Cesaro. You're missing something. Hmm? They announced that the King of the Ring finals would be live on Tuesday. Hmm. Yeah, with no other info. <laughs> with no info of when the fucking King of the Ring starts. 
I guess it's tomorrow. So they're going to just blow through the semifinals and get down to the... I, I guess. I, you, you could do four matches and then two second round matches on Raw in a three-hour Raw. Easy. I know we've done stupid things before, but how do you announce the finals and you don't even announce the tournament? Well, I don't know. I think we may have misheard it. No. Maybe it starts on Tuesday. Nope. I, I, in fact, but there's I, no programming on Tuesday. I was there? completely baffled, and so I went to the Observer site, and Dave has an article here. And all he writes was, WWE just announced the finals of the King of the Ring tournament on Tuesday night on the WWE Network. Is it its own show? It's yes. the finals. Yes. No, I don't know if the tournament's on Tuesday, Vinny. It's just the finals. I, I mean, I, I think the finals are going to be their own show. I guess, yeah. If this conversation, by the way, entertains you, then you will enjoy the main event of Extreme Rules. Three men <laughs> unsure of what they are arguing about. Uh-huh. So then we had New Day versus Kid and Cesaro. And thank God this got moved to the main card because for a long time, this is the best match in the show. And uh, some may say it was best overall. I think it was the best match on the show. I thought I, I liked Roman and Big Show more, but it was that was a very good match. I'll, I'll tell yeah. everybody the truth right now. Yeah, but I thought this was better. This was this was I, I won't argue with that. So, the New Day's gimmick is in fact that they suck, and the crowd lets them know this. But it even with this clown show gimmick, when they do a bunch of stuff with the small guys and the big men tag in and Cesaro and Big E, everyone loves to see strong men fight. Because it's awesome. Always. Cesaro was especially awesome this this night as he caught Big E on a leapfrog. And when I say caught him, he didn't even move. No. <laughs> just, just didn't his legs didn't buckle. He with in a normal stance, he caught Big E in midair and just stood there. Slammed him down and had a giant footstop on a Big E's enormous pecs. And usually when you see someone like uh uh Finn Balor. Thank you. Finn Balor hit a foot stomp or or Kenta hit a foot stomp. They'll fly through the air, and they'll kind of kick the guy and then fall down in one motion. Cesaro jumped high into the air. His feet came down on Biggie's chest, and he stood there for a minute. Yes. <laughs> and then stepped down. Who else was it that used to do this? Was it... Uh, Loki? Oh, that's right. No, there, there was somebody else that would like do a, uh, a standing uh, backflip foot stomp and just stick it. Oh, God. Um, Who was that? Because that was also awesome. It was TNA, was it? It wasn't Daivari, was it? No, it wasn't Daivari. You can't do a flip. It was, uh, <laughs> who was it? I, I know. I remember thinking this now. <laughs> Some guy just killing it's people every drive week. drive me nuts. Anyway, well, but yeah. this was a really good one. He leaped high in the air and stomped right on his chest and just stood there. He should have started dancing. <laughs> or uh, Hindus. Hey, oh, hey, that'd be even better. Yeah. So they did a uh, series of spots on the floor. Everyone tumbled out and fell down and... Crowd chanted, New Day sucks. And Xavier, who was not a legal participant in the match, screamed, Why? We're winning! <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? He asked. Yes. Xavier, I've totally turned the corner on Xavier. He is a great corner guy. He's he's yeah. the best corner man he, on the earth. He's effectively a manager. Yes. So, crowd loves Cesaro pretty much every, t- every time he did anything. He kept teasing the giant swing and not delivering. And he finally broke it out and everyone was so happy. And everyone took turns hitting a big move, including Natalia and Xavier. And it ended with uh, Kofi and Cesaro in the ring. Kofi school belled him, held the trunks to win. And the New Day had the best celebration ever, doing a three-man dog pile in the aisle with both both belts. Very fun. What's a school bell? Did I say school bell? Yeah. School boy. I don't know what site you're on right now. But anyway, afterwards, just, JBL said, I'm bad at radio. I'll bet Natty leaves Tyson now. Yeah. What a way to rub salt into the wound. Well, Who was it that asked about their relationship, by the way? Was it Lawler? I don't know. Because whoever it is, I'm pissed off at him now. Stop bringing this up. There this was another stupid uh, storyline that just went back and forth on every show. Go ahead, Sean. There was another power move that Cesaro did that was very impressive, and that was when he pulled Kofi Kingston up for a top rope suplex. He called the superplex off the superplex, apron. Yes. yes, he pulled. Yeah, he pulled him up over the top of the ropes and over the ropes. It yep, was, he, he pressed in with ease. He is a freak. Yeah. Did you know, Sean, that last year at this time, Cesaro had just won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal? I do remember watching that. Yes. And you know what happened to him? Uh, curtain jerker. Yeah. Yeah. If that. That's How sad. the fuck can you watch this match and not think that this guy needs to be pushed all the way? I don't know. I don't know. He's, Jesus Christ. He's he was fantastic. so awesome in this match. He needs better trunks. But other than that, he's awesome. Man, he's so good. And Vince thinks he's boring. Did you watch your own main event? Yeah. Go 
Go on. We have the experts panel with Booker T and Corey Graves. Corey Graves got dressed up as best he could. Hair slick back, eyeglasses on, whole full suit and tie. It was ridiculous. He still has a giant tattoo in his throat, and so he looks silly. It's not just that. He's all tatted up. He's he's punk to the core. And he comes out there and they put him in a baby blue suit and and spectacles. Yes. And they and they comb his hair. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ. Anything else you want to take away from the guy? Why don't you put a mask on him while you're at it? That, that would have been better, actually. Jesus. The lesson is never get a tattoo on your throat. No, the lesson is never go to work for this company. If you want to have any individuality whatsoever. I that too. Because they will strip every bit of it away from you. Renee interviewed the New Day backstage. This was so awesome. This is what promos should be. And she had a great question. All right. She said, do you guys feel that it's your positivity that got you to where you are now? That's actually a good fucking question. That is question. much better than the usual question of, give me your thoughts. <laughs> give me your thoughts on your win. Yeah. I'm happy. They were all cackling and jumping up and down and joyful. And they eat, They all had like just one or two sentences about how it was the start of a new day. And they knew they could do it. And they screw the haters or whatever they said they, it's not what they said it's how they said it that was so wonderful and then, mostly Xavier they had a new chant new day new champs that's right that's right yeah and then the uh, truck zoomed in from earlier and Harper poured out and Dean now Dean was driving <laughs> you Oops. and Dave both noticed this it was never explained you know these two men got in a fight drove G- somewhere GBL mentioned it a couple times so yeah. they definitely acknowledged it yeah but yeah it was weird <laughs> of all the things to care about <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking about this. Let's envision what happened. These men were having a fight, hitting each other with weapons as hard as they could. They got into a truck and drove away. We don't know what happened, but at some point they switched spots yeah, and I then know, drove back. I know exactly what happened. They pulled off somewhere. They got out of the car. They brawled some more. This time Dean jumped in the car and Harper jumped in the window and then Dean drove off. So Dean was trying to drive away. Sure. All right. So uh, he hit a dive off the truck onto uh, Harper and the New Day. And then they brawled back to the ring, and they just announced this was you know, a continuation of the earlier match. They got down to the ring, and here's what happened. You know why it's important that they switch drivers? No. Because otherwise, all we would imagine is for 40 minutes, they just drove around in the car together. Punching. And then came back. <laughs> Punching each other in the car. That's stupid. This wasn't stupid? <laughs> it's all stupid. Okay. So they went down to the ring. They threw about 40 chairs in the ring. They hit a power bomb on the chairs. Harper tried to bury Dean under the chairs. Dean climbed up, pressed land Harper off the top rope on her chairs, and then hit Dirty Deeds on chairs and won. Technically, I believe this was the longest street fight ever at just under an hour. Uh, I think there was a uh, an Antonio Inoki island fight that went well over an hour. Well, I mean, an island fight. I guess you're right. It was a street fight. Sure. I think that what they should have done is had a semi drive in when they were originally backstage, like in the Marine Four, and they could have just jumped in, you know? Fought all the way there, and then the semi could have just dropped him off here again. It should have been every time. It should have, like we said, it should have been skits throughout the show. And if they didn't want to do it in different locations, then it should have been on a different vehicle every time. They cut to they they, they cut to the back, and here, here's Dean and Luke fighting in a taxi. Here's Dean and Luke fighting in a truck. Here's Dean and Luke fighting in a boat. Here's Dean and Luke fighting in a helicopter. Why not horseback it's or on horses? <laughs> yes. Because it's not 1997. Jesus why. Christ. Is that hard to just like send that one camera guy and these two guys to film a bunch of shit and then put together some cool stuff on this show? I think if you think about it, I think Luke Harper was in the truck going away because he's a pussy. And yeah. Dean Ambrose was in the car driving back because he's the hero. But so he, still. He wanted to win. Yes. Well, maybe maybe Dean, maybe they were out of the car and Dean jumped in the car and tried to run him down. Oh. Mm. And and Luke Harper managed to jump onto the truck and then climb in the window. Interesting. Yeah. That way that way he wasn't fleeing. He was still attempting to kill the man. Or they drove off and just got out of a camera frame and then just stopped the truck and waited for 40 minutes and then switched positions and got back and drove Or maybe back. Luke drove back and he really wasn't driving. Well, yeah, I didn't true. see him driving. That's true. I only know what people have told me. He was on the roof when he jumped off. How did he get on the roof? I don't know. John Cena versus Rusev in a Russian chain match. Eden's back. Eden was back. JoJo was never seen again. So it was the touch the corner rules. And they had red lights for every time Rusev touched a corner. Think about this. This is a Russian chain match. What do they call it? Unbreakable Soviet steel. Unbreakable Siberian steel. Siberian steel. (laughs) The violence. Men chained together like animals. 
And meanwhile, there's red light, green light in the fucking corners of the ring. <laughs> Is this the first time they've had lights like that? No, no they've, they've done, done it before. before. It's so stupid. So they were going the first two or three times they went to try and touch the turnbuckles and get pulled back, and they were going counterclockwise, like on a baseball diamond. That threw me off when they and went clockwise. The third or fourth time they went clockwise, we all it was cognitive dissonance. Was all, yes. What's happening? He's going the wrong way. You're always supposed to circle counterclockwise. Yeah. And when they started going clockwise, I didn't know what to do with myself. So what you had here was stand on my head. Two dudes with a chain and these stupid rules, and they can't do blood, and uh, there was no saving this. They, God bless them, they tried their best, but there was nothing to do. All you had was do a move, tap two corners, and then play tug of war. Repeat, 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 repeat. Well, the thing that was annoying to me is. Not only did they kill stipulations on this show, but even in matches where they didn't kill the stipulation, they kind of did kill the stipulation. Because this was built up, the chain match is so dangerous that you have to to essentially kill your buddy so that then you can go touch all four corners. That never fucking happened. No. It was all dragging and yanking. That's what this match was all about. Dragging yeah. and yanking. Tug of war. And luck. Yeah. Exactly. This spot where Rusev put on a camel clutch and Cena fought to his feet and then started ramming him into turnbuckles. But this, in the process, almost helped Rusev win. Yeah, because Rusev's body touched the corner. This made Cena look dumb. So uh, Rusev, the uh, the giant bad guy who uh, hates America, came to the ring in his uh, Russian chain that uh, was uh, monogrammed. For, Embroidered. For Cena that had a little American flag on it. Yep. Yeah, so that was very nice of him. It was very nice of them to go to all the trouble to have electronics. Yeah. And, and, and embroidery. Straps. Yeah, nice, soft straps for the for the real men just, just fucking chain the thing to their bones. Yeah. This There was one great spot, which was Rusev sent Lana to the back. But the reason he did so was because everybody starts chanting, We want Lana. And so she jumps up on the apron and gives the pageant wave. And that's when he sent her away. So they must have known that inevitably at some point during this match, everybody was going to chant for Lana. Because that's what built up him kicking her out was they cheered for her and then she waved to them. That was pretty good. So the finish, each guy had touched three corners and had one left to touch. And it was the same corner for both guys. And they stood there staring at each other. And one fan in the front row thought maybe they forgot the rules, and he jumped up, and he pointed to the corner as if to say, this one! <laughs> you idiots! <laughs> Come touch this one! The one that's not lit. Yes. And finally, Rusev tried, and Cena pulled him back and hit an AA, and then strolled over and touched the corner and won. Yeah. I it, think it was too bad, except every time, every time anything happened, they would turn off all the lights. And to me, as soon as they hit that AA, shouldn't that have turned off the lights? I don't care. Mm. I'm not arguing the r rules here. Nikki versus Naomi. And Naomi got a new song, new entrance, and most importantly, new shoes. Oh, yeah. She has electric shoes, a light-up neon, uh, started off green, and then began to change colors throughout. And that would be my takeaway from this match distracted me from her which is impressive yeah they it, changed colors it was it was i couldn't tell if they were changing colors when she was on offense and then when she was selling they would turn another color i definitely think they were pressure sensitive of some sort huh so the match was like 10 minutes long and it was never bad but there's just no point to this it, it just killed the crowd yeah announcers talking about bigfoot and brian thought that was boring yeah think about this that'll tell you something right there Brian loves Bigfoot, Sean. Well, oh. you know what it was, was... Bigfoot Silva or the... No, Bigfoot, the Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Yeah. Think about when you have to listen to people talk about wrestling and they don't know anything about wrestling. <laughs> so then I have to have these numbskulls talking about Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Naomi became, I believe, the second person besides Bubba Ray Dudley to hit the full Nelson ass buster. And uh, then Bree hit a kick from the floor and Nikki hit the rack attack for the win. So the Bellas, if I've been told now they were just magically baby faces. But they still cheated to win here. Yeah. Because they're heels, but they were baby faces in this feud. I see. Yeah. Don't look so, at me, dude. I don't book this stuff. So this accomplished nothing. Rusev yelled at Lana, who went to talk to the authority. He commanded her to go talk to the authority. He sent her to accomplish a task. 
Which I might add, she successfully did. She sure did. Roman Reigns versus Big Show in a last man standing match. We never found out which authority person she talked to. Maybe it was Seth. Because if it was Hunter. We did see him there, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That opens up many storylines. What did Lana do? That's right. (laughs) Stephanie's gone and been around for weeks. I hadn't thought of that. I thought of it immediately. I'm sure you did. (laughs) So the early part of this match was quite awesome. As uh, Roman would pull out some hardcore item or another and show it either dismiss it or put it away. Or break it. Or break it, yes. Uh, Roman got a kendo stick. Show broke the kendo stick over his knee. Roman got a table. Show put the table back. (laughs) That was my favorite, actually. First, he put it back. And then he beat him up, and then and then Roman got a move, and then he went to get the table, and the second time he got the table, and Show cut him off. Show broke it. Yeah, Show with his fists. I tried to put it away, but you got it again. Now I must break your toy. Yeah, yeah. So... Classic parenting. <laughs> what? <laughs> I put the video game away once. If you get it again, I break it. Yes. You know. Sledgehammer smash on your video game. Yeah. I do have a uh, traumatic Christmas memory of when I went out and put my new train set away, and my mother did, in fact, throw it away. I don't know if I've ever told this story before, but one day we were driving, and this is this is such a vivid memory that I, honest to God, I could go right now and probably try and find what happened because I know exactly where it was, the the curve in the road and everything. We were driving in the car. I was probably about five, and I'm just in the back seat. There were no car seats back then, back in the seventies. Children were demons, and and people hoped they flew out the window. So I'm sitting in the back seat, and and I'm just I'm just kind of playing around, and I reach underneath my mom's seat, and I pull out this dinosaur, which is not my dinosaur. It's like a brand new dinosaur, and I'm like, wow, oh my god, and I start playing with it, and everything like that, and eventually my mom is like, what are you playing with back there? And I said, this dinosaur, I found it under the seat, and she goes, that's not your dinosaur. And I said, I found it under the seat. And she goes, that's not your dinosaur. And I know I didn't buy you that dinosaur. And we were just at the store. You stole that dinosaur. Oh. And I was like, no, I didn't steal the dinosaur. I found it under the seat. And she goes, no, you did not. I, we did not buy that. You must have stolen that dinosaur. And she grabs the dinosaur and she rolls it in the window and she fucking throws it out the window into the bushes. <laughs> Ugh. And I was like, oh, I was devastated. So we go all the way home. And uh, and my dad comes home from work, and he goes, Son, you've been a good man lately. I've got something for you. Wait right here. And he goes outside. By the way, this sounds exactly like Brian's dad. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> he goes outside, and he's out there for a long time. And then he just kind of comes back in, and he's still got nothing. And he goes, Val... Did you find anything under your seat in the car? <laughs> and she's like, oh. oh, my God. He'd bought the dinosaur and hid it under the seat, and I'd found it. And my mom was so devastated at this a- accusation and throwing it out the window that she took me to the store and she bought me two dinosaurs. Oh, there you go. So happy ending. It did have a very, very happy ending. I'll never forget that to this day, that story. I never got another train set. My wrong- I was wrongly accused. It's terrible. Maybe I'll buy you a train. Maybe my dad will buy you a train set. He probably would, actually. He probably would if he told me you like trains. I would, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Where the hell were we? Uh, Roman started whacking Show with a chair, and Show was doing some very cartoony overselling. Show, it was very clear in this match, has reached that I don't give a fuck stage, and uh, still had the best match in the show. Hey, I've said it a million times. The day you stop giving a fuck, I don't care what anyone says, that's often the day you get much better. Yeah. The T's going through tables on the floor. And then at last, the big spot for that was uh, Roman had a pair of Superman punches in the ring, but then Show grabbed him and chokeslammed him out of the ring through the tables on the floor. That was great because it was the safest bump of all time. It was, uh, yeah, an, an average size pro wrestler. I guess a big wrestler in 2015. But he went through two tables. Yeah. <laughs> and not on top of each other, and side by side. a perfect flat bump. Yeah. Think about this match. It was so awesome. I... I I thought there was a chance this would be good because their last Raw match was good. I also thought there was a chance this could be terrible just because a lot of nine counts and everything like that. This ended up being really good, and it was actually a brilliantly booked match because 
when Roman came out, these Chicago fuckers wanted to hate this guy. Yeah. And every spot they did, you knew in Chicago in Extreme Rules that everybody was going to be chanting, we want tables from the opening bell. They didn't introduce one table until Roman Reigns match so that he would be the first guy to go out there and get a table. And then Big Show would put all the tables away and he would break the tables. And the whole match was designed for Roman Reigns to give the people what they wanted when Big Show was trying to take it away. They made Roman Reigns look like a tough guy by having him go through those two tables with the choke slam over the top rope. They just built this guy up big. And by the time the match was over, these people went crazy for Roman Reigns. This was a huge success. Yeah, the uh, the biggest spot was the show prepped the English announce table and put two stairs next to it, and they teased going through uh, going through that for a while. And then they ended up fighting on top of the announce desk. Now, let's think about this for a while. We have seen these uh, announce desks break from time to time from guys fighting on top of them. This is Roman Reigns and the big show. <laughs> That's like 700 pounds on top of this desk. I guarantee you, this is not just the average announce desk they use every week. This was uh, bulked up and reinforced, and it was still weebling and wobbling, and them fighting up there turned out to be the scariest part of the whole show, not actually going through anything. I was worried they would just fall down or, or go right through it. And so show or, uh, Roman finally gets out of that and runs off the stairs. Show had set up, and it's a spear off the announce desk through the Spanish announce desk, which had not been prepped at all. And show was actually able to get up off of that. But then Roman went back over to the big, giant, super reinforced announce desk, tipped it over on top of show, and then stood on top of it. And then show finally could not get up, and everyone cheered. They loved Roman, and he had, he had accomplished something here, which he hasn't done since like the time he beat Orton at SummerSlam last year. Yes. <laughs> this, seriously, was one well, of the... Yeah? He did accomplish something on that Raw match where he pinned the guy clean in the middle, but that was actually a setup for this match. This actually felt like a bigger accomplishment. It was a bigger accomplishment. This was one of his, in all seriousness, one of the uh, one or two biggest wins of his single career, singles career. I would say so. Yeah. So there you go. Now, hopefully this fucking feud is over. <laughs> I don't care how good this match was. It's got to be over. It is time for this man to face somebody who will have better matches with him. Nothing against the Big Show, because Big Show was great. When he found the notepad and... Oh, I didn't even talk about that. Opened up the notepad He's... and screamed, Who wrote that I need to lose weight? <laughs> and the fans didn't know what he yelled, but they all started chanting JBL. <laughs> <laughs> Stooges! They all stooged him off. And I also like the spot where there was a table in the corner... And Show went for a spear, but Roman moved out of the way, and Show speared himself headfirst to the table, at which point Lawler said, and I quote, What an idiot! <laughs> there were some gems on this show from the announcers. Kane bumped into Randy Orton backstage, and Randy delivered a badly scripted, badly delivered promo, reminding him the authority, the authority would throw Kane away when they were done with him. Well, he's right. He is right. We had tough enough submission highlights. <laughs> you know what? It wasn't as bad as I expected. No, this was actually much better than I expected because pretty much, by and large, everyone here was either someone who had legitimate uh, athletic ability uh, athletic ability or accomplishments, or they were geeks who knew they were geeks and playing along. And made fun of themselves. Yes. yes. Yep. A guy, one guy claimed to be in the worst shape of his life. <laughs> it's a new era. Yeah. Yeah. This was... This was th 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 these... I don't know if they just chose the right videos or if wrestling fans have just become more self-aware of late. Oh, it's definitely the former. <laughs> have you seen any on the board? Well, you're right. <laughs> there are people out there who uh, are, are unaware of reality. Completely disconnected. Bo Dallas then came out with his pathetic mustache. Can't grow one, don't try. What are you talking about? It's it's perfect for this idiot. <laughs> well, I guess that's true. He's got a bow T. I can't even um, I can't even believe he hasn't used that line yet. So he ran down Chicago, and then Ryback came out, and then they didn't have a match, but they had a fight that looked exactly like a match. <laughs> they had a match with no referee and no finish. And no bell. Yeah, yeah. So Ryback squashed him. His shell shock and his music played. What? <laughs> they needed to just waste a little time. Apparently. And apparently realized right here at this point. 
Byron Saxton was interviewing an angry Rusev when Lana appeared, and she announced that Rusev will, in fact, fight John Cena on a fourth straight pay per view. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah, going to have an, an I quit match of payback. And Rusev went off about how this was perfect because Cena was an American and Americans are quitters. You know, Cena's now beat him three straight times. No, actually, I guess Rusev won the first one. So he's only beat him twice. So I guess he can just beat him a third time. I figure the day is going to come where it's been long enough that they do that Mick Foley finish again. Which, by the way, I want to take credit for. I called that 15 years ago. <laughs> And so now every time they do an I quit match, I try and call it again. And eventually I'm going to get it right. But I did call that finish. Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins. There was a point in here. They had a raw match in a cage. They did, in fact, have a raw match in a cage. It was all Seth trying to scramble out for a while. And then I'll be honest, there was like a, there was a five-minute ma- chunk of this match, which is you know the length of most raw matches. I completely zoned out. And I realized, I'm staring at the screen, I realized I have no idea what happened in the last five minutes. But it didn't feel like I missed anything important. I think it was on Raw when they asked uh, Randy Orton what he was going to do now that the RKO was uh, outlawed. And he said he had uh, lots of other moves he could use. And apparently those moves were uh, throwing Rollins into the cage. I have a then, lot. Uh, that is, then, in fact, what he promised, though. Yeah, and then throwing him into the cage some more. He said he was going to throw him into the cage, he was going to boot him. He to break and his kick jaw him. and his ribs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Cole reminded us that Orton would instantly lose if he hit the RKO. So yes, we would get a disqualification in the cage match for hitting a legal move on a show called Extreme Rules. I may have done that exact same rant earlier in the show, but it bears repeating. So no one cared about anything because they all knew it was going to uh, eventually Kane was going to do something, and nothing until then mattered. So J and J security ran down. They tried to climb in, but Orton knocked them off the wall. All right, stop right there. First off. Every fucking thing about this going in was stupid. (laughs) So, Randy Orton gets to choose a stipulation. And he wants nobody in and nobody out. And so it's going to be a cage match. Right? Yeah. So they immediately start doing escape the cage rules. I thought it was nobody in and nobody out. So, that's one thing. Randy Orton... Or pick uh, a hell in a cell. That's what I thought! That's what he should have picked was hell in a cell. Because he's got a roof. Yes, but he's an idiot. He just picks a cage match. Apparently not having watched any fucking cage matches in the history of WWE. So he doesn't want anybody in, anybody out, and so everybody immediately starts climbing in and out. So then, Seth, also an idiot, bans one move. Not two moves. He doesn't say, I'm banning the RKO and the punt. He's not saying, I'm banning the RKO, uh, the draping DDT, and the power slam that goes real fast. Those are my three moves that I'm... None of that. He bans one move. So... After the stipulation of the cage match, one week later, they they announced that Kane is the guardian of the gate. What the hell does that mean? I thought that meant that Kane would be down there at ringside and he would make doubly sure that nobody got in or out. Instead, all he's doing is standing at the door, which, by the way, if somebody wants to get out, I guess Kane just opens the fucking door because it's escape the cage rules. So really, his only goal is to make sure no one gets in the door. What about the people that are trying to climb in and out of the cage? He wasn't doing anything. What is the guardian of the gate supposed to do? I don't know. He stood there is what he did. In a suit? Yeah. He stood- I'll get to that, by the way. <laughs> I got a lot to say about this suit. But go on. This Kane was doing absolutely jack shit. And J&J was trying to climb in and out. Yeah. So they begged Kane to let them in the cage, but Kane chased them away. So they tried to climb again, and Orton knocked them down again. And by this point, by the way, we were a good 50 minutes into this, and this crowd was bored of seeing dudes hit the steel. They had seen that movie. Oh, yeah. So Orton T is going out the door, but he exchanged looks with, looks with Kane and figured he had a better chance of getting a pin in the ring. And he teased an RKO, but remember it was illegal, and so he had a pedigree for a near fall. I swear to God. The it's crowd- a good near fall. The, fan- the fans actually bought that as a finish. Yes, they did. And the crowd began to chant, yes, 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 perhaps anticipating a knee strike. Instead, he tried to punt, but Seth escaped and hit a Pele kick. So they brought- fought some more. Orton went to leave through the door, but Kane slammed it shut. But then Seth ran into the door, which not Kane down. Then they were brawling in the open door, and Kane slammed it on both of their heads. Now he's mad. He's angry, Kane. 
I guess the storyline was that it was true what we thought all along, that Kane was actually in cahoots with the Authority, mm -hmm. and he was deliberately there to screw Orton. But then Seth hit the door into his head, and that pissed him off, and so now he wanted to beat the ass of both men. Not one announcer, by the way, explained the story. I have to make this up in my own head. Yes. But that was the story. So Kane got in the ring, and J&J &J got in the ring, and he chokeslammed them. And he stood over Seth and Randy for a long time, surveying the scene. And he eventually chokeslammed Randy. And Seth cackled, and he went to leave. But Kane grabbed him back, and he chokeslammed him, too. Somewhere in here, he split his slacks. Let's talk about this. <laughs> I didn't catch this. I don't know if you're aware of this. Actually, I know you are, Vinny. The GoFundMe. There, I'm aware it exists. Okay. I saw this. All right. Well, uh, the GoFundMe had uh, $5. All the way up until uh, yesterday. And I, I went up today and it was at $10. And so I was talking about it on Observer Live. This fella, Nate Lewis, created it. And for a full week, I've been calling Nate out. I want him to contact me and tell me what his plans are for Kane's gear. Because he only wants $80 to outfit Kane. And Vinny, as you're well aware... Actually, you may not be, but when I started wrestling, boots alone were like four hundred fifty dollars. Oh yeah, it's these were my boots. these were not yeah. the I don't know what the boots are today, but these were legit patent leather boots. I bought a pair of boots in nineteen ninety eight, and I was still wearing those boots in two thousand and fifteen, and I had probably wrestled probably close to eight hundred matches, and these boots were as good as new, so they were worth my four hundred fifty dollars. But the point of this is. I thought, what are you getting this guy for 80 bucks? Why don't you contact me and tell me what you're going to get, and then I will consider funding this, or at least paying some money. So Nate got a hold of me, and he called into Observer Live. And Nate said, when he was a youngster, his parents would take him to church. And then after church, when he went home, and he wanted to go out and play, they would say, go out and play, but make sure you take off your church clothes. You're not allowed to go play in your Sunday best. So every time he sees Kane out there in his slacks, that's all he can think about. Is that Kane should not be wrestling in his Sunday best. So he went to high spots, and he found a pair of generic red long tights. Not the short ones like Bo Dallas. Red long generic tights for sixty-four ninety-nine. So he figured that he could get them shipped to him and then shipped to... Director of Operations Kane, care of WWE in Stamford, Connecticut. And this could all be done for $80. And I was like, all right, dude. So I donated $25. And in the middle of the pay-per-view, actually shortly before the main event, it reached $81. I saw. <laughs> it has now been fully funded. <laughs> you don't say. And what a fucking coincidence. That mere moments after Get Kane some fucking gear on GoFundMe, which is the name of the page, by the way. Mere moments after they make their $81, <laughs> Kane splits his fucking trousers. So now he really needs new gear. I'm hoping that this can be overnighted. Now, you may not be aware of this, Vinny, since you weren't aware of any of this, but when I donated... I got two emails from GoFundMe. The first one had a GoFundMe letterhead, and it says, and this is a quote, and it's on my Twitter. You've made a $25 payment to, in all caps, get Kane some fucking gear. <laughs> this charge will appear on your statement as, quote, WPY asterisk, get Kane some fucking gear. That's worth my $25. That's going to be on my credit card statement. And then also they sent me another one, which is just a very, it's a very happy picture. It says, GoFundMe, donation receipt. Hi, Brian Alvarez. Thanks for your $25 donation to get Kane some fucking gear. And there's a picture of Kane signaling for the choke slam. So worth my money. But yes, this poor fucker split his pants. And had to do another five minutes of evil corporate Kane with his tidy whities hanging out the back of his trousers. Well, thankfully, I think it was his shirt. This poor guy. His long shirt. He was tucked into his pants. So, uh, he chokeslammed both dudes, put Seth on top, but Randy kicked out. 
So he went to Tombstone Randy. But Randy escaped. Then Randy hit Kane with the banned RKO. And then Randy turned around, and Seth hit Randy with the banned RKO. Oh, man. And Seth crawled outside and was declared the winner. He was declared the winner, but he used a banned move, as did Randy Orton. Randy used it on a... Uh, granted, it was not a participant, but he used it. He used it. And I don't, I don't think Seth said, you can't use that on me. Pretty sure he said, you can't use that, period. And in fact, I'm pretty sure he said, that move is banned. Yes. Yeah. I don't think he ever said... Somebody he go did. back and watch Raw. No, they flat out said they played their replay back. All he said was the move is banned. Uh-huh. So the announcers were arguing about whether this should count or not. Fans were extremely pissed. And the uh, show ended. And by the way, it's not like it was a good match up to that point either. So yeah, it was a pretty crummy pay-per-view. Rematch. I'll do a rematch next yeah. month, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, they're going to announce on Raw, I guess, that this... Both guys used it. Cage match was a no contest. At Extreme Rules. A a double, double, <laughs> double DQ cage match. On Extreme Rules. <laughs> At Extreme <laughs> Rules. For hitting a diamond cutter. It's called Extreme Rules because they're extremely serious about you following the rules. They are extremely... In that main event. They're extremely restrictive rules. Yes. What a dumb show. <laughs> the tag match was good. Rowan and Big Show was good. Otherwise, Jesus... Now, what are you talking about? It was fine. Dean Ambrose and Luke Harper, I thought was good. What? It was. Well, it was all of right. Of the hour that it took place, five minutes were on TV. You're right. <laughs> and in two separate segments. But Ziggler and Shea, as Sean and I can agree, that was, was that, good. That's fine. I enjoyed it. All New right. Day and Tyson Kidd was, was good. very good. That was Zara good. was awesome. No uh, argument. Roman Reigns and Big Show was, was extremely good. Mm -hmm. uh, Cena Rusev? Cena Rusev was okay. Hmm. It wasn't terrible. It was very long and boring. It, it was nothing like their first two matches. It no. was hokey. It was. They do seem to get worse every month, don't they? Oh, yeah. Wait till we get to I Quit. <sighs> and then Nikki and Naomi was just long and boring. All right. Let's, uh, let's do a song here. Grant